Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have 10 red truck Christmas DIYs for you. They're absolutely darling and I know you're going to love them. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing and becoming my crafting BFF. If you do like any of today's projects, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's go make some DIYs. I am so excited to show you guys this DIY because I, it is one of my favorites from today. Well, they're all my favorites. I always say that, but I really do love this one and it was so fun to do. So I am just going to do some decoupaging with a napkin. So I am, I found these napkins at Dollar General and I thought this cute little truck on the front and it says home for the holidays. I thought it was so cute. So if it's um, a couple, like two ply, you want to go ahead. You just want to make sure that you're left with one layer. Otherwise your Mod Podge, it's not going to work quite right take my advice because I've learned the hard way. And then I do have this back that I found uh, at Hobby Lobby, but you could do whatever sign blank that you had. I just liked the planks in this one and it's what I had in my stash. And so that's why I ended up using this, but easily any type of background that you have even from Dollar Tree or anywhere would work fine. So I am just going to cut off this little hanging thing. We're going to replace it, but I wanted to be able to dry brush some paint on this. And I believe I'm using the cashew color in Waverly's chalk paint. I I just kind of picked it to match the color of my napkin and so when I decoupage the napkin on it will blend in really well. And of course you just do this as thick as you want on there. And then I am just going to place the napkin down and you probably could just go ahead and decoupage it that way. And it would be fine at Mod Podge it, I guess I should say, and it would be just fine. But I am going to kind of cut this little design out. And I had a lot of people on one of the last uh, decoupage projects that I did mention doing br a brush with some water or a water brush to kind of cut your uh, napkin around the design. So that's what I'm doing. I'm giving that a try. I'm just getting a really fine brush and I'll dip it in the water. And then you just have to remember that the water will bleed just a little bit. And then I will just kind of tear this away from where I am working. So the other was sped up considerably. This is real time right here. So it does take a little bit of time to do this. But honestly, I felt like this gave a much better look than just cutting it out with scissors. However, I have done done it with scissors and it does look fine. But see how you kind of get those little torn edges there? That just kind of when you Mod Podge, those just blend in to make it look like it's part of the background. So super cute. And then and we'll just speed this up a little bit here so you can kind of see. I just go through the whole design and I do take off the home for the holidays part. So I put that on separately. And on the words, I just get as close to the words as I can without actually uh, cutting into the words. And then I do put some Mod Podge down on my sign. And I don't think I showed that, but I'm showing it here with the words here. But just Mod Podge in the area where these go. And then I just gently lay them down. And then you are gently, gently, gently going to go over the top of them with some Mod Podge. And I was able to kind of pull that up to get it straight so that way any wrinkles can get out. Now you do not want to use your Mod Podge roller on when you're working with the napkins because from my experience, it literally just shreds it. It just tears it because it's so fine and so delicate. And so just keep that in mind. I'm just working with the brush. And remember, this is very sped up. I am going slow and I am taking my time so that way even the brush bristles does not rip the napkin. But you can kind of see it just fades into that background and how like it looks like it was just made to go on there. Now, right here, I'm just taking, you could even use like a, a gift card or a Cricut, like I'm just using my Cricut weeding tool to kind of go through and just indent the area of the planks in the sign. That would be completely optional. And again, there's plenty of other things you could use than having to use like a Cricut tool, like a gift card or, or credit card or something like that would even work. Uh, really easily. Um, and then I'm just going over the part of the sign that I had not put Mod Podge on. So it all has the same type of finish, if that makes sense. And then I'm just going to feed through some twine and tie that off on each end. And then I finish it off with a little bit of Mod Podge on the end so it doesn't fray and it won't come untied.
And if you ever get like wonky jute twine that kind of curls up or especially when you get to like the middle of your roll, just spray a little bit of water on it and it straightens right out. So I'm showing you just, I'm taking a little bit of evergreen and I just roll it around with some twine and then just use some hot glue to glue that off. And then I add a little bit of berries and a cute little bow. This is total personal preference. I just thought it looked really cute, but let me know what you guys think. Would you have ever known that this was a napkin on this little sign here? I've been seeing these little truck planters at different places. This little red truck came from Hobby Lobby. It's absolutely darling. This one was from their spring line, but I've seen them actually with every season this year. So hopefully you can find one. I think I've seen them at Target as well. But I have these little teeny trees. These just came from Dollar Tree and I just picked out three different sizes. These little trees are found in Dollar Tree's little village section. So if you're looking for some, check there and hopefully you can find some. And I'm just kind of placing them all together. I thought it would be so cute to have these like tied up in the back of this little red truck like it had just been to chop down its Christmas trees. So just using a little bit of glue, I glued all three of those trees together. And then I'm just taking um, some twine here and I'm just tying it around like it's a rope tied around these trees. I thought that would be really cute to have it look like these were all tied together. And then I'm just going to kind of bend this top tree. You can kind of see when I stick it in, I wanna bend it over so it fits over the hood or the roof, I guess, of the car there. Uh, so it just kind of naturally um, sits there. And then I'm just putting a bunch of glue on the base there and I'm just gonna stick this right in and then just hold that until it dries and it has a good firm hold and then just bend over the tip of that tray as I need. And look at how darling this looks. I mean, just to set either on a tiered tray or just a little shelf sitter, I think this is darling and it definitely brings in that farmhouse Christmas vibe. This cute little cutting board came from my local thrift store. I paid $1.50 for it. Um, I have seen these in the antique stores. I have started to see them pop up in some thrift stores. You can get cutting boards very inexpensively at Ikea, also TJ Maxx or Home Goods. I've seen like quite a good display at a fairly decent price. Even Hobby Lobby started to carry some. So I originally wanted to paint this white, but my little brush there broke on me. And as I was getting another one, I decided that I didn't want to paint it, that I really wanted to have this have like an old farmhouse wood look to it. So I just took a baby wipe. My paint was still really wet, so I was able to kind of wipe it off. You can see it does leave a little bit of a film there, but it does end up okay when I put some wax on it to kind of stain it. Now this is in no way going to be food safe. Where I did get it at a thrift store, I personally would not use it as where I don't know the history of it. It's just for decor purposes only. So definitely keep that in mind as you're purchasing these. And then you can see I just put a lot of the antiquing wax on it. It's a very thick coat. I'm just using a baby wipe. You could use a sponge brush. However you wanted to apply this would be totally fine. But I did leave it a little bit thicker because I wanted it to be a little bit darker. Now it did have some really good distressing marks on it. But if you have one that doesn't have that like it's a brand new one you got say at ikea or hobby lobby or somewhere and you wanted it to have kind of that old farmhouse look i just like to take some needle nose pliers and you can see i literally just as bob ross would say beat the devil out of it i just bang it up and down get some really good like pock marks in it and then as you put your wax over it you're just going to saturate those marks and it, they're going to have a really dark color and see i go over the edge to kind of give it a really good look there like really distressed so and that's kind of the like the look that i'm going for so that's up to you whether you want to do that or not now we're going to decorate this for christmas and i have this cute little ribbon this little gingham check i thought it was really cute and christmasy so i you can see i just use my little um aim of flame there to kind of seal the end of the ribbon so it won't fray and i'm going to wrap this around so there's definitely going to be a back to this um, where it's going to be sitting up like on my kitchen counter or in my china hutch or something you're not going to see the back but i tried to match it up as good as i can there so that way it would be it would still look fine if you were to see it from the back and i just thought that was a cute little trim on the bottom there so now i'm going to flip it over and i'm just going to tie the ribbon in a bow at the top and so i just do like a traditional old shoestring bow here so you guys nothing fancy with this i just tie it in a knot first to get it on there and then when i'm done tying the bow I go ahead and trim the edges into dovetails. This ribbon frays really easily, so I did just seal those edges when I cut those little dovetails there. And then I just kind of, you know, play around and fluff the bow to make sure that it sits how I want. And then I do end up uh, gluing a little bit of greenery up in here. I'm just taking some picks that I had with some holiday looking greenery and just putting some hot glue underneath that. 
uh, and then sticking the picks up as you can see me here and I grab some little berries to do the same thing so as you're gluing it you kind of can place the bow where you want it to so if you want those tails to hit somewhere else which I believe you'll see me do here in just a moment you can put a little dab of glue underneath those just a teeny teeny one to kind of hold them in place so they're not kind of going all ski wampus everywhere so I love using ornaments to do different DIY projects with or even just to use for tiered tray projects. So now that the ornaments are starting to come out in the stores, have a look at what they've got. Kind of use your imagination because there are tons of different hacks you can do. So I'm just taking this flat metal truck here and I'm just going to glue it onto the front to kind of give this that old farmhouse look. I just love the red truck look. It's been popular for a couple of years now and I'm still just absolutely loving it. So I just think this has a really good, you can see how cute this looks. I I just think it's darling now I take a little bit of uh, thicker twine or you could use rope or leather whatever you had and just putting a little tie at the top there just to kind of make it look like an authentic cutting board if you wanted to hang it from this you could or it would just be a piece just for decor purposes but I absolutely love how this turns out I think it is perfect for a farmhouse country Christmas in your kitchen I think it's just I, I love it <laughs> what do you guys think of this one I'm just taking this cute little chalkboard sign from Dollar Tree. It's got that darling little buffalo check fabric on the back and then the front portion is just a chalkboard. And then I also have this little truck ornament that came from Dollar Tree. They've had these the last couple of years so hopefully you can find some. But I just used some wire cutters to cut off the portion that says Merry Christmas. I'll probably just save that for another DIY. I just want the truck for this. Now I'm just taking my putty knife and I am gently going underneath this chalkboard portion here. I'm doing this very slowly it is sped up a little bit because I just want to make sure that it doesn't break or rip or anything like that I will be placing it back on so the fact that you can see that little glue strip on there does not make a difference at all now I take two of these evergreen picks from Dollar Tree. They come in like a pack of 12. I've seen them at Dollar General. I believe I've seen them at Walmart. So hopefully you can find some at one of these stores or have some in your stash or you can even just like um, dismantle like a garland or something like that to have some. So I just wrap two together and make an oval shape and I just keep matching it up to the size of my chalkboard so you can see enough of it around the edges. And then I did take my scissors and kind of give it a little trim around the edges so that way it wasn't, I don't know, I think it just makes it look a little bit better if you trim a little bit of it off so it doesn't look so shaggy. So I did that. Now I have, these are from Walmart and I think it's called like a winter cedar berry or juniper berry or something like that. I found it in their floral section, but it has these little teeny tiny red berries on it And I think they're so cute and I just kind of put um, Picked a little bit of the ends off of each of one of them And then I'm just gluing it around kind of in an oval motion so that way they all kind of face the same direction I thought that looked really cute with that evergreen pick It kind of helps lift it up off of there And then I'm just putting some hot glue around the ring on the back of this and you'll see here I just carefully place that on now you can kind of see if you can I don't know but I I I glue it on upside down when I go to put my chalkboard on <laughs> because the holes they hang my sign up are facing the bottom right now where they really need to be facing the top. Anyhow, you'll see me fix that in a minute here. But I just go around anywhere that my little uh, cedar berries are sticking up or I want them to stick down more then I just use my hot glue to help hold those down. Now I take four tumbling tower blocks and glue two together and then the two on top of each other if that looks okay there and then I glue that down on top. This is going to help give that three-dimensional look. It helps pop out that chalkboard sign. So now I just match up where I want that truck and I just use some hot glue around the edges there and then I just eyeball it well you can see I'm going to drop it first and then I eyeball it and get it all where I want now you can use any one of these for a hanger you can see I'm just going this came from Hobby Lobby um but maybe it came from Walmart I'm not really sure I'll have to look look down in my description box and I'll let you know because I can't recall right now where I picked this up from but I do love the green and the red on there it did come from Walmart it's just coming to me now that I remember actually picking it up there so Walmart is where I got this now you can find the pit berry at the Dollar Tree too and use that totally fine. Just putting back the twine hanger on here will be fine also. Now you can see that I realize now like, oh, whoops, I put this on backwards. So I just stick my putty knife up underneath that tumbling tower block and where the glue was. The glue had dried pretty good at this point, but I was able to get it off and I'll just stick some glue on it and flip it around. So, you know, no harm, no foul. It looks totally fine. 
Now after I get this centered and put down in the correct place that I want it, I will just thread this little Pitberry garland through one side and then just twist it around so that's what's going to help it stay. Now if you do plan on hanging this somewhere that it's going to get a lot of wind or anything, this wire will stretch and get longer and longer. So you do may want to use some twine in that case, but I just thought this was really cute. It's just going to hang maybe on my pantry door or just on, like layered on another wreath or something, but I think for a cute little design, this turned out so cute. What do you guys think of this one? Do you like it? I love giving you guys hacks and I love this one. This is a little set of ornaments that came from Hobby Lobby. I bought it when the Christmas was 50% off, so it ended up being $5 and there's these three darling little wooden truck ornaments in there. Now, all I'm going to do is so simple is I'm just going to remove that little topper there just by unscrewing it with some pliers there. And then you're left with the most darling little truck for tiered tray decor. So simple and so easy. If you were to resell these like at a booth or something, you could separate them up. You could even put a little spackle on the top of them to cover that whole and then just kind of touch up the paint. I'm just painting with some black paint and a little bit of white. I'm making a cute little window on the front because when I had it sitting down, it looked just a little bit bare there. So you can just keep that in mind. Do that if you would like. The ornament section at stores is a great place to look for tiered tray decor or little trinkets like this that you want to have to stick into your decor. They make so many different varieties of Christmas decorations now that you can almost find anything to fit your decor style. So always make sure that you're checking out those Christmas aisles and the ornaments to see if there's anything that fits your decor style that you need. They, I'm starting to see them pop up in stores already. I was in Hobby Lobby the other day and they are starting to put Christmas out. And so it's a great time to check while the selection is there. I'm curious to know if any of you guys already do that shop the ornaments section to find some of your everyday decor items for tiered trays or different things. But I absolutely love this hat. Now I think this little truck turns out cute. I love how that window looks. This is going to be so cute with our little display. I found these truck signs at Dollar Tree and honestly they were so cute I had no idea what to do with them and I also had this little candy cane lane sign. Now for the candy cane lane sign any of the Dollar Tree signs that are like this would work. It just happens to be if you look at this upside down it would still be Christmassy. So I thought it would be really cute to kind of make a little planter out of these. So all I'm going to do now one of the trucks uh, was on clearance which I didn't know Dollar Tree had a clearance but if things get broken or things like that they do kind of mark them down so uh the truck that's in the back it kind of is damaged a little bit and so i thought it would be perfect to put it kind of behind this other truck and so i'm just gluing the candy cane lane sign in between and that is going to become kind of like the planter portion of this little planter box that we're making and then um this one was also on clearance but honestly there was nothing wrong with this one Anyhow, I'm just going to measure these up because they're not completely flat on the front. Um, I had to make sure that I glued like on the hubcaps to get that candy cane lane sign on there. And then I'm just matching them up and setting it down so that way the tires will be even. So when it sits, it will sit completely flat. And after I get these glued together, the fun part comes. We get to get all of our picks and florals and embellish it really cute. For the florals that I'm using, they all come from Dollar Tree. They're just these little evergreen picks that they have, and I'm just folding them in half and then just kind of sticking them wherever. I'm not even sure that I use a full package. Anyhow, I take some of the berry picks from Dollar Tree and just pull off the different sprigs of berries, and I just kind of alternate between different florals that I have. You could customize this to look however you want. I also have these cute little icicle branches that came from Dollar Tree that I absolutely love using in all of my stuff and so I just kind of sporadically put all of these in until I think it looks good. And here's our little red truck planter put together. I think this looks so cute. It is definitely a great addition to my Christmas decor and so easy to do. What do you think of this one? Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends.
You guys know that I am a big fan of checking out your wedding section at your craft store. I found this darling sign there that somebody would probably just overlook thinking, oh, I don't need a sign that says sign our guest book. And maybe you've had a wedding and you have something like this sitting around and you can totally make it be something that you can use for your decor. So I just take it outside and I sand off that design because I don't need anybody to sign my guest book. <laughs> and I just sand it with my electric sander. And I'm gonna go over the top of it with just a light brushing of just some chalk paint. Um, I go really light at first, I do get a little bit heavier than this but I just take my time uh, going slowly so I don't overdo it but I do want a very rustic look to this sign but I wanted it to be a little bit brighter than what that background left. I am a big fan of finding different ways to make signs and I'm going to show you guys how to print on tissue paper today. I am a big fan of this. So I'm just taking a piece of paper and a piece of tissue paper and I am printing it where you'll have a shiny side of the tissue paper and kind of a dull side and you want at least I like to print on the dull side. So I print it or tape it with the shiny side towards the paper so the ink will not slip on that shine, that it will have something on that little matte dull side to adhere to. Now I'm going, this is the first time I've tried printing on an entire page like this. I'll usually just tape a little section onto the front of my paper, but I want my sign to be the whole size of my paper. So I am just taping all of the edges down. So you, as you saw, I put my piece of paper down and I'm just folding all of the edges over. That way I have the entire surface area of the front of the paper for my design to print on. Now I make sure that all of my edges are completely taped down and so I just go over them. You can see how that looks here and then I have got this entire front surface here and I just feed this through my printer like a normal piece of paper. So you obviously want this side right here up for your design to print on and you can see how big the design looks and how good it looks. Looks. I purchased this design from one of my favorite graphic shops on Etsy. I'll leave the link down in the description box. They have different designs for all sorts of seasons and they're absolutely beautiful. So now I'm just carefully removing the tissue paper. It doesn't matter if the back of this tissue paper rips at all because we're going to cut the excess off, but I obviously don't want to go just, you know, willy nilly and pull this off really quickly and have it end up ripping the front of the design. And also make sure that you give some, like a fair amount of drying time to your design. I waited about an hour after I'd printed this. I was just busy doing some other DIYs, letting this dry completely. And you can kind of see how the ink goes through the tissue paper onto that normal piece of paper. So you just wanna make sure to give it a little bit of drying time uh, so that way you don't have any problems with the ink smearing or anything. So now I'm just cutting off the excess of tissue paper all around this sign so it will fit onto the top of our surface. So I just take some Mod Podge and place that down. Now you can use glossy, you can use luster, satin, whatever type of Mod Podge you have is gonna be just fine. And I just lay the tissue paper down and then I sped this up a little bit, but I do just gently rub with my finger to kind of get as many of the bubbles and wrinkles out. Now it's tissue paper and a liquid, so you are going to get a little bit of the wrinkles and that's totally fine, especially with the rustic look. And I just, but you can see here, if it gets too bad, I can just kind of pull it up gently and I can kind of reassess and adjust things if I need to, to kind of keep rubbing that design down to get it completely adhered to the surface. Now, if your sign has these grooves like my sign has, I'm just taking a paintbrush with a little bit of water on it and I'm going over the top of this. This goes right through the tissue paper. I get it wet first and then I will go back over it to kind of make those indentations in the design so it looks like this is actually part of the wood. You wanna make sure to go over and seal everything in with another layer of Mod Podge. This is just going to seal in the ink. It's going to give it a little bit of like waterproofness. If water was to get splashed on it or anything, you wouldn't have any problems with that ink bleeding or anything like that. Then to help the top and the bottom of the sign where I have the excess blend in, I'm just dry brushing a little bit of antiquing wax onto there. It glides on very smoothly with that layer of Mod Podge there. And then I pay attention to the edges and so it looks like that sign blends completely in. And then I go over the tissue paper with a little bit of the white uh, paint that I had that I painted the sign with, just a dry brush, just to kind of give it a little bit of an aged look. So now I felt like this sign, you could leave it the way that it is, but I felt like it needed a little bit of embellishment. So I'm just tying just a normal shoestring bow out of this buffalo check ribbon that I have and just kind of making my loops down to size of how big I want the bow and then we're going to add some greenery and things to this. 
I'm just taking some leftover greenery and some little red berries from other picks that I have that I have cut down and I just tie a couple together and I'm going to use some hot glue to glue the berries in each side there because the stems weren't long enough to tie together like the greenery was. And then I'm just going to, you can see, just glue those right in there and then I will glue this to the top of the sign here. So, and I do that just using a little bit of hot glue and then you just wanna make sure to hold that in place until that completely dries. And then the same thing, just glue that bow onto the front. And then I just dovetail the ends of my bow. You can cut them at an angle, do however you like to do the ends of your bows. I did leave my tails longer so it would kind of drape down the sign. So you can see I'm just using a little bit of hot glue there. That's just going to help my tails kind of hang and droop the way that I want them to. And then I just kind of do a little bit of fluffing on the bow and everything there. And look at how absolutely darling this is. I think this is beautiful. This would be such an easy project to make and sell if you had a booth. I just think this is so cute and I'm so excited to get to decorate with it. I got this darling little house at Dollar Tree. It was part of their nautical line they had in the spring and summer this year. I think it's absolutely darling the way that it is, but I do love kind of giving things a makeover as you know. And so I'm going to make this a little bit more Christmassy. Now that roof came right off with just a little bit of love and just a putty knife underneath it. It came off so I could put it right back on. I'm just using some white buffalo check, white and black, because that matches my Christmas decor. The fun part about this project is you can do whatever type of craft paper you want whatever design you can even make this for any time of year it does not have to be Christmas now I love using the Elmer school glue stick there you saw the purple glue that if you've been here for a minute you know that that is my most favorite method of getting paper onto things and then you just use an emery board to file off the edges so it gives it a really crisp clean look so I just used some hot glue to glue the little roof back on there and then I thought to add a little Christmas touch because it was a little bit bare from what I'm wanting to do with it I have this little like holly sprig here. You can see the package there. It came from Hobby Lobby. I just thought it would be cute to glue a little bit like mistletoe at the top of the house there. Now this little wood cutout comes from Dollar Tree. So I just painted it white and then I printed a little design on tissue paper. Now I love printing on tissue paper. I'll link in my description box the video where I give you like step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that so you can kind of see. But you could cut a design out on a cutting machine. You could use water slide decal paper if you're good at hand letter whatever method you want to use to get a design on there or leave it plain tie a cute bow on it anything's going to work for what you want to do for the tissue paper method you just use some decoupage after you printed your design on tissue paper and you just gently press it down working from the middle out and then you'll go back over each of the edges with some mod podge i use my brayer here you want to be so careful when you do this because you could rip that design still because it is very delicate uh, and then you just go over it with some mod podge to seal it in and it is so easy again i'll link that video down in my description box if you're curious on the whole process on how to do that so i like to do a little bit of three-dimensional look sometimes when I'm gluing pieces together so I'm just gluing a couple of tumbling tower blocks on the edge of this heart or on the back of the heart excuse me so that way it pops out a little bit from the house now once I got done with this I kind of wish that I had moved that heart a little bit up so I know it's maybe not the best placement but it, it was glued down pretty good I didn't want to have to tear it apart to do it so so if you're not a fan of where it's glued on there I know <laughs> but it looks okay I mean in the end it's okay but since I did a three-dimensional look to it, I just take some of these little greenery picks that I have here and some berries, and I just tuck those in behind the heart on the side to kind of cover up a little bit of that negative space there uh, where that plaid is, kind of bring a little bit more of a Christmas feel into it. It kind of softens it a little bit, I think. So I just thought this was cute. I love that little saying, all hearts come home for Christmas. I thought that was super cute. And again, sticking with the red truck theme, I love that. Now, some of my berries had a little bit of uh, the red part scraped off. So just a little touch of red paint will be enough to kind of cover that up. And I do, I like to add a little bit of dimension. Uh, so I just took some antiquing wax and went around the edge of that heart to kind of give it a little bit more of a dimension rather than just the stark white. But all in all, I think this turns out really cute. I love the saying on it. It will be darling for a Christmas tiered tray. What do you guys think of this one? So I am not the biggest scrapbooker in the world, so I had no idea that these things even existed, but these little kits are at Hobby Lobby and I can imagine maybe other craft stores in their scrapbooking section and you can get them with part of the 50% off sale when they're having that on their scrapbook and paper items. And it comes with several sheets of paper and then a ton of cute little embellishments as you can see here. 
The thing that drew me to this particular set was this darling little red car with the Christmas tree on top of it. I just love that. But look at all of these other fun, cute little things that it comes with that you can use not only for scrapbooking, but just for any type of DIYs that you may have. I definitely think this is worth the money. This car is just a little bit big for this little piece of wood that I had from Dollar Tree to initially put it on for my tiered tray. So I did reach into my stash and I found this little tag. I have seen them at Dollar Tree. I believe this particular one came from Dollar General, but I'm just removing the little hanging portion of that. And I'm just going to use some of the Elmer's Purple School glue stick. And we're going to use this scrapbook paper also came in this kit. So I'm just going to use that as well. And I'm just going to use my little Mod Podge roller to make sure that I get a good bond. Again, if you don't have a Mod Podge roller, that's totally fine. You can just use like a little gift card, credit card, scraper, anything to get a good bond. Just make sure it's adhered really well. And then I'm just going to trim off of the edges there. And then I just use my little emery board. You can use a finger sander or whatever you have. This just gives the nice, crisp, clean edges to this. And I realize here that I put the paper on backwards. <laughs> I wanted my tag facing the other way. So I'm trying just to decide what to do with it. And as I lift up the tag and I look at it, there is no way this paper is coming off of here nicely. So I just decide to embrace it and we're just gonna go with it. So it works, maybe not exactly what I wanted, but really you get the same effect in the end. So it's okay. Sometimes you just have to embrace those little accidents that happen. So I'm just gonna use some school glue to put this car onto the tag as well. Now I just find the little hole in the tag with my finger and then just punch the end of my paintbrush through it so that way it makes the hole apparent there. And then I'm just going to re-thread the original twine that came on it. You obviously can get new twine or if you know that twine was kind of thick so if I couldn't have fit it through the hole or anything like that, I would just get some new. But I just tie that back on there and then I don't show this for some reason but I did glue a Jenga block onto the back and that is going to make it stand really well on our tiered tray. I think this turned out so cute. It looks just like Santa's little car that he's driving. He's gone to his Christmas lot and gotten him his tree. I just think this turned out really cute. Everything in this project came, uh, with exception of the scrap of paper, I will admit that, came from Dollar Tree, but so fun and easy to create this. I love the black and white buffalo check in this little shadow box sign. I just removed that original saying, and we'll use that, I'm sure, in another project. Um, but you can see that when I took the little three-dimensional um, brick that was there, block, whatever you want to call it, it did tear up the paper a little bit. And so I had to kind of get into my scrapbook stash and decide which to use, which I decided to stay kind of with the same buffalo check theme. I didn't have any of the bigger buffalo checks. So of course you can customize this to whatever your liking is, but I'm just going to cut this paper to size and then I will just place it in. I don't glue it or anything. I just trim it as close to being the same size as I can. And then with my thumbnail, I'm just kind of pushing that in to make sure that it stays there and honestly it is in there very good it's not coming out and then I just do the fun part of kind of laying all these pieces out and deciding where I would like to put them I did have to remove the base off of the Christmas tree so it would sit flat and then I did kind of push all of the bristles flat on the back of that bottle brush tree so that way it would sit flat against the background all of this is just stuck into the shadow box using hot glue. It did take a fair amount to get that tree to stick and stay up. So just be aware of that. But I just took all these little village pieces and glued them in. You can customize this to make whatever scene you would like. I just thought this turned out so fun and so cute. I do make a little shoestring twine bow that I put up at the top. That would be completely optional. I'm not really sure if I love it or not, but it's there. And you'll have to let me know what you think of that down in the comments. And here's a look at this completely done. I think the scene is really cute and it is so fun. It is the perfect size to sit like on the bottom of like a tiered tray or just tucked into a little corner that you might need a little bit of holiday cheer.
I just want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. It was so fun putting all of these red truck Christmas DIYs together. I hope that you guys feel inspired to create something, or at least you had fun watching the DIYs that I made today. Is there one of these that you can't wait to try, or did you have a favorite from today? If you did, let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you did like today's video, and I would love if you would consider subscribing. Thank you again so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have an amazing day. Happy crafting! If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.